Hello, I'm Dominic Patton, Senior Editor for Deadline Hollywood, and thank you for joining us today in our Deadline Virtual Sundance Studio on day one of the 2021 festival. Now, clearly, we're not in Park City this year because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, but that doesn't mean we won't be covering the films and the deals in depth. In that context, we are joined today by Nanfu Wang, the director and producer of the harrowing, probing, and timely documentary In the Same Breath. A Sundance alum and winner with 2019's One Child Nation, Nanfu's latest film is an examination of the rise of the pandemic in China literally a year ago, its toll and path around the world, especially to an unprepared America. In the same breath, will debut on HBO later this year and debuts today at Sundance at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. Nanfu, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. But I, I don't want to give any spoilers away, obviously. It's a documentary, it's dealing with the COVID-19, so we're, clearly a lot of people understand the stakes involved here. I mean, just as, as of today, I think we're looking at uh, over 425,000 deaths here in the United States, over 25 million cases, over uh, millions and millions of deaths, almost two and a half million around the world. This film starts on New Year's Day, 2020, and you weave the personal and the political here. I wanted to get a sense why did you decide to do a film like this now? I didn't plan to do it. Um, it happened. And I started thinking about it. Um, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. Uh, actually, exactly a year ago at Sundance in January, um, I was um, attending the Sundance Film Festival last year. And I went to China um, in January and left my son there with my family so he could spend the new year the Chinese New Year with them. And then I came back to the US and I landed in Utah on January 23rd, the same day the Wuhan's outbreak, that the lockdown happened. So here I was in Sundance going to films and staying at the hotel. And in the meantime, I knew that my family was in China and we lived um, 200 miles away from Wuhan. And my son who was three year old was there and the rumors came out like my city was going to be locked down as well. and then I started looking for information, how serious was this virus? How serious was the outbreak? And you know, the Chinese government were telling people, don't worry, it's okay, everything was contained. And at the same time- well, In fact, you, you point out in the film, and I found this very interesting, the very first mention of the pandemic in China, which was actually on New Year's Day, 2020, was that eight people had been arrested for spreading false rumors about a pandemic. And I found it, having seen the whole film now, which by the way, I recommend everybody do now or on HBO uh, when you get the chance, it's so prophetic of both how the American and Chinese government dealt with this. Yeah, it was January 1st. That was the first warning from the doctors who had already seen patients being infected, who themselves were infected. And, but the news were buried. Um, the people who sounded the alarm were arrested so nobody really paid close attention. And I certainly didn't at the time. That was why I even took my son to China and dropped, left him there with my family. So anyway, all of this happened. And uh, as I discovered more and more of the cover-ups and the things that the government didn't allow people to know, uh, it compelled me to, to make this film, to show people um, the reality that they didn't get to see themselves. One it, thing that you, you do in the film is obviously you made this film for lack of a better expression remotely um, as has become the reality for so many of us during this terrible, terrible pandemic. You brought on free, freelance camera people uh, all throughout China, many of whom got, at least in the early days, almost unprecedented access to hospitals, some of whom literally took what you said quite literal when you told them to keep the camera on something. There's a one scene, again, no spoilers, but there's a very long scene involving a foot that goes on a long time. Um, how was that for you as a director? Because clearly that's very different than the way you've worked before, utilizing that footage, that, that, those camera people. And then the footage, how did you help, how did you put it together? Uh, it was very liberating to work with cinematographers um, and many of them and remotely in the way that in China, for example, we had 10 cinematographers in Wuhan filming. And one of the first shoots was the hospital ICU rooms. And um, another shoot at the same time was going 
right in the ambulance with the first responders and picking up patients from their homes. So those were, uh, were where we started. And we have camera person filming that, and then we have camera people filming people in their home being quarantined. So we divided them into different teams. The 10 cinematographers would send footage to me uh, every night. We developed our own platform to upload the footage that would be synced to my computer, my drive um, at the same time when they upload. So I would get up and see the clip. And so every night we reviewed the footage. What was most fascinating to me is by looking at the footage, I could started seeing the personality of each camera person and even their polit political views where they stand. Do they feel proud of what China did or were they critical about it? You know, through the lens, you are seeing how people, how pe people's minds are thinking. And as a director, that was something that I ne never experienced before when I worked with one camera person or myself filming on the ground. And now it's seeing a range of style um, and then personality and then trying to guide them or even use their personality to film the things that would would be applicable to that specific style specific person um, and to me i found that uh, actually sometimes more efficient than being on the ground but of course it requires especially somebody whom i haven't collaborated before it required very detailed instruction direction um, from filming what type of scenes, uh, what type of shots, how to film it, what are the references, uh, images that we can send, and then communicate every day. Now, one of the issues, of course, that, that happened a lot, and the film talks about this, is the, I don't want to use the word censorship lightly, but I believe that censorship is an appropriate word here, of, of, of real information, and then people would suddenly have a, sh a course, course shift, and there'd be a lockdown. Uh, January 26, obviously, when Wuhan uh, uh, shut down, and then we see the more shutdowns, and then we see the lockdowns in America. And you draw some interesting parallels between the way the way the, the coronavirus was dealt with in, in the People's Republic and the way it was dealt with in the USA. What led you to, 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 to develop that as a through line for the documentary? Because it's a very different way of looking at this, one that maybe some people in America and maybe some people in China won't like that much. Absolutely. I think the people in two countries tend to believe that we are very different. And um, depending on where they get um, their worldview, like what information they get and how their worldview was formed, they could each be patriotic and thinking that this is the best and the other way is different. And we have been seeing during this pandemic, the two countries, um, people, you know, kind of doing that like talking against the other the other country and to me it was a shocking experience to especially in march and april to see the exact um type of outbreak um happening here which i didn't see it coming like most of the people i i was surprised and most more surprised than the initial outbreak started in wuhan and it was a confusing experience to me um, to try to make sense of what's going on here and why is it happening here and why it happened this way. And it was those questions that drove me um, and drove this film to the direction that we are seeing now. So when I started in January to making this film, I thought the film was going to be just about China. And the more I saw what happened in the US, um, I had more questions. And I would say it was my political awakening moment of like seeing the US in the in the new way that I never did. Um, you, you have uh, over your career done a number of examinations of Chinese modern Chinese life, the role of the government in, in China. One of the elements you utilize quite deftly in this film is media. Um, you actually at points create a wall of media where clearly everyone is delivering the same message over and over again. How do you think this film will be received by people who do get an opportunity to see it in China? Um, by the way, I apologize that was my son screaming there. That's <laughs> okay. He makes a cameo in the film as well. So we might as well make a cameo in our interview. Yeah. Um, I, I do hope, and then I think it will be really important um, for people in China to see the film. And I 
would make an effort and try, hopefully that will happen. Um, although it would be very difficult. I think what I've witnessed and I hope that the film can convey is how the authority has shaped the narrative of um, China's response to the pandemic. And people in China, they now formed this memory um, that this is how it happened and this is how China handled it. And this memory is not something that they witnessed and remembered. It's more so shaped by the information they consumed, um, TV, newspaper, and social media, the information that's what, that was allowed to present to them. So what really struck me is I felt I had seen the history being written in real time. And, and this is the version of the history that the Chinese people will remember. And I really hope that by seeing the film, they will realize and be more conscious and aware of how the history was written and by whom. Um, so um, that, that would be my hope. Well, I hope as many people as possible see this film uh, either at Sundance uh, when it debuts later today or in its other screenings or on HBO later this year. Nanfu, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us. We'll be back throughout the entire festival with more from our Deadline Virtual Sundance Studio. I'm Dominic Patton. See you later.